Hello, everyone, and welcome to this, the Ihanzu Symposium of 2023, held online and at the University of Bielefeld. I'm happy that we can get together once again for a celebration of the Ihanzu language and what we have learned about it from our research during this course. So for those of us who are encountering it for the first time today, Ihanzu is a Bantu language spoken in North Central Tanzania by approximately 26,000 people. Um, for more information about the language, where it is spoken, as well as the Ihanzu people and their cultural and historical contexts, I encourage those interested to follow the QR code on screen to a short introduction to Ihanzu I prepared as part of this course. Personally, my research with the Hanzu language and its speakers began in late 2016 with some cursory field work with Mr. Onesmo Kidadi in Singida town. In 2018, I followed this up with some more extensive field work in and around Ibaga town in Mkalama district. Because of generous funding from the Japan Society of the Promotion of Science, spent a year analyzing these recordings in Tokyo at the Tokyo University of Foreign Studies under the tutelage of Professor Daisuke Shinagawa. And from 2019 to 2021, I helped facilitate a period of Ihanzu language documentation undertaken primarily by local researchers, Sara Kalayel and Samueli Isia, during which they collected nearly 300 hours of audiovisual material, including stories, songs, narratives, and procedural explanations, such as the one represented on screen here, with uh, local researcher Sarah Kalayel interviewing Israel Ibrahim on building the traditional Ihanzu house. And it was around this time that, uh, invited by uh, Prof. Andras Barani and uh, facilitated, facilitated by Prof. Jutta Hartmann, uh, I convened the first linguistic field methods course with the Hanzu language as the subject language. In fact, today's Ihanzu Symposium is the third uh, Ihanzu Symposium to take place since 2021, and last year's symposium can also be viewed in recorded form online. Um, formally, the uh, Introduction to Field Methods course was held in a crash course format over the course of one month. So participants met roughly three times per week and uh, engaged in formal lessons on things like different types of data collection methods, as well as critical software programs, Alon and Flex. And the core of this course, however, was time spent working with a speaker of the Ihanzu language. Now, the typical image which comes to mind when working with the speaker of a language in a field methods context is probably a bit like the one you see on screen here, two people sitting across from each other and interacting face to face. In our case, where our course participants were in Europe and our Ihanzu consultant was in Tanzania, we had to adapt. As such, we used the video telephony software Zoom which had served us well in previous iterations of the course in both 2021 and 2022. Uh, this year, however, for whatever reason, the internet connection in Ibaga, where our consultant lives, was particularly weak. As such, we only used Zoom in the classic sense for the first session and decided to switch to the video call function of messaging services WhatsApp for the remainder of the sessions. The logic behind this was that as a piece of software owned by the company Meta, there was a chance that the connection might be more stable as products owned by Meta tend to have faster bandwidth in Tanzania. Uh, the second week of elicitation employed this method. Unfortunately, however, even WhatsApp video calls were extremely poor, and therefore we resorted to participants recording their questions as voice messages, and our Ihanzu consultant and I working out responses this way. This worked reasonably well, but it was really slow. Uh, perhaps more importantly, however, relying solely on voice messaging removed what I believe to be the important visual and interactional elements of the data collection process. Both our language consultant and our participants expressed their desire to see and directly interact with each other. As such, we took the additional step of inviting our Ihanzu language consultant to come to Haidome Town, where the internet connection was much more stable. Here, we could return to Zoom video calls, and we see a quick snapshot of uh, our Zoom video calls. And so for the rest of the last week of data collection, this was the format we used. 
in all of the data collection sessions, uh, whether they were done through Zoom or whether they were done through WhatsApp or whether they were done through video call, our Ihanzu consultant was being recorded with a Zoom H5 audio recording device, following which all recordings were sent to participants such that everyone had a high quality recording of all the elicitations for analysis. And now a note on our Ihanzu language consultant, Mr. Nicholas Nalingigwa Gideon. I began working with Nico in 2018, and it became clear from very early on that he would be a crucial figure in the documentation and description of the language. A respected member of his community, not only has Nico been a great advisor on how to work sensitively and effectively in and around the Hanzu speaking area, his attention to the details of the language and his intuitions and meta commentary have proven really sort of invaluable to our developing understanding of the nuances of Ihanzu. Mm -hmm. Additionally, Nico is a speaker of not only uh, Ihanzu and Swahili, the lingua franca of Tanzania, he's also fluent in English and was therefore able to work with course participants directly. Uh, this is not the case with, mo with uh, most speakers of Ihanzu, so it's no exaggeration to say that Nico was an indispensable part of our learning during the course. And I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say that we really can't thank him enough for his time patience, and of course, his uh, unique sense of humor. Uh, today's program features talks from five of our course participants, each one exploring a distinct topic chosen at the beginning of the course and forming the focus of participants' data collection throughout the course. And I can say with confidence that each of these topics are new to the field of Ihanzu language studies and represent really sort of exciting advances to our understanding of the language. Talks are approximately 15 minutes in length with 10 minutes for questions and commentary at the end. Finally, I should make clear that the participants in this course are not Ihanzu specialists. In fact, participants have only been working with the Ihanzu language for around four weeks. And as such, transcriptions and analyses should be seen as preliminary. With that said, uh, what we are about to see is a series of diverse approaches to complex language data and novel findings which can richly inform how we proceed in our understanding of the Hanzu language. So though preliminary, all of the research is real and all of the research is relevant. To our participants, I would like to say thank you in advance for all of your effort. Uh, it's been such an intensive month of learning together and I deeply appreciate how seriously you all approach the work. All that remains now is for you to enjoy sharing what you've learned and to engage with the questions and comments in this, the company of friends and colleagues. And most, most of all, we're here to celebrate the Hanzu language in all its beauty and nuance, and to look back on the challenges, puzzles, and excitement of the past few weeks. So thank you, and I look forward to learning with all of you today.